All right, hey everybody. Uh, Gonna have another go with a video. <laughs> but anyway, um, as you can probably tell from the title, um, there's going to be I'm going to be going off in a different direction for a while here. Uh, I've picked up some more equipment, uh, mainly the Sherline stuff, and I've been getting that set up and for, been working on that for several weeks now, getting things set up. Uh, there was a hold up getting my computer. Uh, it got lost and ended up in Salt Lake City. We finally found it. Had to redo tracking and get it out here. It finally showed up. So I was able to get my. Um, what is it doing here? I don't know what the camera's doing, but I hope it's still working. But anyway. <clears throat> So anyway, I'm going to just start doing some videos on basic machining, what's involved, and I'm particularly since the Sherline is so popular, and it's good stuff for the money, it's, it's very good stuff. Um, so why not go ahead, start filming, and I'm going to start going through and showing some videos on the basics and, and moving up from there, kind of a Sherline or tabletop machining for dummies type, not that anybody out there is dumb. But you know what I mean. Um, getting people that are interested in it or curious about it. And some of you people may have this stuff out there as well. Um, but anyway, let me show you where I'm at. Uh, let's see if I can. There's the mill. I went ahead and got the 8 axis. Um, now you can get these things. I mean, they're everywhere. A lot of people buy these and they realize that I'm, I'm never going to learn this. They get frustrated. They sell them. So, you know, there's a ton of these machines of various configurations and age and stuff out there at all price ranges. They're actually quite reasonable. Um, especially if you just want to go the mechanical route and not, not go CNC and all that. If you do want to go CNC though, I would recommend just going ahead and getting it with CNC or used with CNC or whatever because you're going to have to go through building your you're gonna to have to deal with drivers and motors and steppers and you know all the all those options. And, but anyway, you know I just went ahead and got it, got it from the get go. I have other equipment um, that's in my shop, my garage shop, whatever you want to call it. I finally got all that stuff drug out and set up, so that's been taking up some of my time as well. I have it's heavier equipment, it's not CNC, and it can tolerate being out there and I can tolerate using it out there but the CNC stuff this is inside this is actually in the hobby room on the other side of the room I got a big L table set up with extra support now and everything so I can you know machine throughout the year and I don't have to worry about affecting the computer and uh, you know the, the temperatures and stuff like that you know this stuff kind of needs to be in a temperature controlled environment if you're, especially when you get down to this really fine micro machining and stuff you need temperature control as part of it but anyway, as you can see, I've got, I've built, uh, I'm building a enclosure. I have the mill and the lathe in here. I'll show the lathe in a minute, but I've been building an enclosure. I've got a big, super dense base. It's a wood base. Uh, and then on top of that, beneath the, the mill, I have another piece of solid, dense hardwood that's about a half inch thick and then I have another layer of a heavy durometer rubber that's about a half inch thick so it absorbs vibration really good it works I had to do some experimenting and trials and stuff because these things if you just set it on a table or on a desk or something as is uh, it just really um, it can make a lot of noise because of the, the harmonics and everything transferred and just turns into a big loud speaker and it will make a lot of noise I mean, it would drive you crazy after a while it would be kind of loud you wouldn't hear me being you wouldn't hear me in the videos you know over the machine as it is now it's quite tolerable you know that's a full rpm you know, you just got that hum that you're going to get, plus you'll have your servo sounds, but uh, it's completely deadened any excess sound. So, you know, I went ahead and, and done all this. Of course, this is, um, 
this lip in here and everything is there's it's sealed so if I end up adding a coolant or mister you know obviously you don't need to flood these things but you know any bit of little spraying and stuff is gonna have to go somewhere well you don't want it all in your room plus your shavings are gonna be flying every which way again that's what this enclosure is for to capture it and then I just get the little stinger um, vacuum cleaner it's great at sucking up shavings and liquid and stuff so you just zip, 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 clean up a little bit when you're through um, you don't have to have all that but if you're going to do any kind of quite a bit of machining it sure makes a big difference you're not having to constantly stop and clean and you got shavings on it. if you got carpet or something it's, it's, it's going to be a big mess so <clears throat> that's taking some time to get this design and figure it out and get materials this is extrusion I have a panel in the back um, and then there's a panel that goes in this side and this side. I don't have them in yet. I'm going to finish that this evening. I just got off work, so i got some time to finish cutting my panels, putting those in on each side. And then all I lack is I'm going to mount a two-foot fixture on each side. So I'll have, you know, light flooding, flooding the uh, work area. And then it can, the nice thing about this extrusion is that you can attach things to it and all that. So if I needed like a little spot work light, I could attach it anywhere in here or even on the base or whatever and spotlight right onto an area because you do got to get in there really close sometimes and really see what you're doing. So I'm finished. as soon as I finish getting my lights on, that's the reason I hadn't filmed nothing yet because I'm not going to do, you know, I need to have light in there where, where I can film and show stuff to you guys. And once I get the lighting in, the the all the axes need to be indicated in I mean they're roughed in they're pretty I mean I could machine parts as is but um, it's crucial if you get this kind of equipment uh, these little machines to be able to indicate in your different axes and your parallelism and squareness and, and the whole nine yards so and it's kind of hard to explain or to read in a book and, and if you're not familiar with that kind of stuff but if I was to show this and I thought I would because it's kind of you this is something you will be doing throughout your time with using this equipment uh, as you do different setups and stuff you're gonna always have to be checking and indicating things in I thought I would show how to basic indicate in the machine and then you've also got end play in your in your in your uh, lead screws and stuff like that and that can be tightened up and and loosened and stuff because you don't want to be machining on something and the table move on you a tiny bit back and forth and, and either bust a cutter grab your part or you know throw your tolerance out you know so those are all little things that you that are kind of crucial to know and, and you need to know that stuff if you're not familiar with machining that much so I'm definitely going to show that I thought you know that because it's it's kind of an important part step of, of it and it's going to give you much more accuracy, better finishes, and just make life generally much better when everything's indicated incorrectly and what you can use to do it and how you know pretty simple. Um, and then I'll just here's the the lathe is over here on this side again same base setup the same extrusion on the bottom I've just got to cut a few uprights and a couple pieces I'm not going to enclose the lathe completely I'm just going to do the, this end and the whole back side because really the only coolant and chips and stuff are all going to always be flying off of right here where you're cutting so that's the main part that kind of needs to be you know blocked from having chips flying up and coolant flying onto my wall and back behind the table and all of every which way so that i also will have done this evening i got the material just got to cut it and get it attached and, and then in the morning or maybe later this evening i'm going to go get my lights and i just need to hook the you know i'm going to attach those to the extrusion wire them up boom click hit the switch and then i can show stuff same thing with this there is some you know there's alignment when you if you buy these machines new at least or fairly new or even if you buy them used uh, they should kind of disassemble them somewhat because you don't want these things banging around in the back of trucks and stuff and being thrown around uh, with everything attached um, you know because that could cause some damage uh, if you get it from Shoreline or one of the distributors or anybody like that 
it's going to be all in pieces and you've got to assemble all this you got to assemble the motors you got to set up your pulley tensions your alignments your your head your carriages all this stuff has to be aligned you know it's just not a matter of you get it you plug it in and you start machining I mean you could do that but you're not going to you know you're going to find out real quick that that's that's not going to be ideal so but this is much easier there's not you've only got two axes you've got your in and out and your back and your well your rotation the face of your rotation stuff like that to worry about and I have no idea how accurate these things are or what accuracy you can get out of them but we'll find out I'll, I'll have to admit this is going to be kind of a bit of a learning experience for me as well because I'm a you know I'm used to running big machines and you know the objective of say a machine shop or something is to produce the parts and with the correct tolerance and finishes and stuff but doing it you know it's in a timely manner time is money so you're always pushing machinery you're going to that limit to where you can still get a good part and your good finish and your good tolerances but you're able to push bigger equipment to, to go faster and do it, you know, and, and you can get away with a lot more. With these, a lot of it you're dealing with your RPM, you're getting, you know, your smaller cutters, you're dealing higher speeds. Although these do have some pretty serious torque, um, they're good, they're, you know, you've got a, a guy like me that's used to big machines, has to, I'm going to have to learn to hold back a little bit from over wanting to just hog through material you know now I do have like I said a couple pieces of equipment outside and if I'm doing a lot of hogging or on my bigger lathe and stuff then I will show that on those pieces of equipment because I can go in there and really do some hogging and throw blue chips flying out of it you know and it'll just grind right on through you know and then bring it in and do the more precise stuff on these and show that so there's gonna be quite a few videos I'm not stopping modeling. In fact, I'm going to be making a lot of stuff for models and parts, and, and I'm going to actually be hopefully offering parts for sale. But it's going to have to be things that people aren't already making and producing. And you know, if it comes to the point where I can make something better or cheaper or different or unique, um, I'll go for it. You know, and if I can do it, you know, and keep the cost reasonable, you know. Um, obviously to keep the cost reasonable on things um, you need to kind of be able to do them in a production capability um, you don't want to spend four hours making one little piece that you're gonna sell for eight dollars you know I mean, that's kind of a you know and you've got to do a complete bunch of setups and all just to make that part well this is not very logical so I'm gonna show as we get going further along in this this series um, how to do um, how to get more into a production mode on these because there are with the CNC there's there's a lot of things you can do um, to um, perform more than one operation but with one setup and uh, I mean a basic a prime example would, would be like on the lathe here um, you know, you can set a couple different tools up. You know, you don't have to have just one cutter. You could have a couple different cutters on here, or you could have your cutoff tool on the back side, and then your main other tool on the front side. Say if you're doing a wheel rim or something like that, you could make a profile tool, which I'm going to show a little of this, you know, grinding profile cutters. I'm going to show a little of that, how to do it at home. <laughs> Hopefully, I've got a plan. And how you can go in and have that one cutter go in and do pretty much the, the profile of the part. And then it'll shift over and cut the part off. Boom. You know, the only thing you'll have to do is stop it, put another piece in, or feed another piece through, turn, turn the program back on, boom, it goes in, machines it, boom, goes around, cuts it, boom, there's even possibly another operation you can add. There's some tricks you can do. Especially if you have, I went ahead and got the, uh, I've got the fourth axis rotary indexer, so there's some amazing stuff between all these axes on the mill and whatnot, in the, and on the lathe. And you add this in, um, there's almost no limit to what you can do with a little bit of imagination. But that's a little further down the road. I want to go over just. We're going to start out with basics. 
Um, it's just this is for you know these people that you know want to learn about it, want to know what's involved, but yet you know you know they're not. Yeah, they're probably. I'm sure there's gonna be people like telling me you should have done it this way or done it that way. This would be easier. Give me to. Hey, I'm all open for it. I'm all open. You know, give me tips, tricks. I'll take them. You know. But I've been machining for the, as of this year. I worked in my first start in my first machine shop 30 years ago. So, I mean, I've seen a lot. I haven't been doing it exclusively for 30 years, but I've been doing it on and off for 30 years, and I'm doing it again on the side now, aside from my normal job, which is a mechanical job. I do help out in a shop, and I've got two friends that I got people. I know people that own shops, and and I'm able to go in there and do some things now and then, and help them out and when they need it, and and uh, I'm able to get material through through shops. I can get bigger pieces of material, cheaper. I can get anodizing done, sandblasting, bead blasting, tumbling. You know, so it's good to know people. So it's that's kind of another reason why I went ahead and picked up this stuff because I have the ability to prototype things on here and if it becomes something that's very a popular item that a lot of people want at a good price I could have it actually production run at one of the shops or they may let me use their machines to, for a couple of hours a day and which you know I've got some options so anyway I don't want to get too far off topic but anyway, so the next video we do, we see will be, uh, I'll have my lighting installed on both of these and that way I can do much better filming and close-ups and things like that. And then I'm going to show a little bit of indicating in all the axes, maybe a little of what's kind of, what that means and what that's for and why or whatever. Um, and then we'll start throwing some chips. So, uh, stay tuned. And, uh, Thanks for watching as always, and thanks for putting out all the great videos out there, and all the great camaraderie that, that we have in this community, and um, I just thought it was time to maybe do a little, just go a different direction. It's been a rough few weeks for me at work, <laughs> and this is a great joy for me to do this, so uh, I'm really looking forward. Any questions, any requests, any Anything you guys want to know uh, up to this point, post them in the comments. I will make a note of it. If I can't answer it right away, I will find an answer or answer it later or just do a whole video on it or something, you know, as we go along, you know. And uh, that should do the introduction. It's probably pretty long and lengthy, but uh, I think I covered everything kind of pretty much. Thanks for watching as usual. Bye.